In Affinity 3, you can create all kinds of transformations, distortions, etc. using the equations filter. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's just cancel that. First thing, where is the equations filter? Well, I've got this layer selected, just a background. You could use other layers, of course. But what you can do, just go to Pixel, Filters, and then down to Distort and Equations. In Equations, you get a very basic equation set up like this. You've got Cartesian, Polar. That's it, there. Also, you've got Angular Units. I'm not going to go into that. But what you can do is you can change the equations here. And I'm going to go with Cartesian for a bit. So the first thing to do is just enter a value. And I'm going to go with x times 10, something like that. And you can see what happens. It squeezes it. So it's a great way of squeezing your layer, the current layer selected. It will squeeze it x times 10 and y. Don't have to change y. You can keep it as y if you want. There's also option down here, extend mode. So extend mode doesn't look very much. But if you change this, go to full, you get the white background there, just white. Now, this is just white filling the whole area. With this one, the zero, you're actually seeing through to the background. So you've got the transparency. Also repeat, and then all that does is it stretches it from the pixels at that point. So you can just see it just drags off. So you've got that, obviously, that sunflower there, it just drags it across. Personally, I very rarely use that one. And wrap. I'm going to use this one throughout the video, but I wanted to show you the other one. So mirror is another one. And the mirror one just Let's just put it, make it a bit easier so you can see it. Three. So you can see it just does that. If I had it with wrap, you can see you just get that, that, and that. But the mirror sort of see, goes there, flips it, and again, flips that one, and so on, so on. And then, of course, once you're happy with your design, you can click apply. However, there's more than that, of course. There's more. There's more. What you can do, you can change, obviously, these settings as well. R, Rx can be used and Ry. Instead of X and Y, X and Y means that you can't move it, which you might be happy with. You might want it to be stationary, locked in that position, but you can, if you want, just enter RX and RY. So RY, and now what you get is this. You can just move it around, reposition it, and again, let's go back to wrap. Want that. So you can just see all different types of designs just by lining it slightly different using the RX. Now, what you can also do, and there, asterisk, remember it's an asterisk when you use time. You can, of course, not use that. I can put plus, I've got a three there now, obviously three, so you can move it. And of course, you can move it anyway, but you can move it just to line it just by using 300 or minus 300, etc. You can also do division. So divide there, just a little divide slash there, and I'm just going to go for save 20, and you get that sort of result. And again, you can still move it around. You might want to, let's just see it. Four, maybe something like that. You can see it's zoomed in and you can move it around, reposition it like that. And of course I can do the same for RY. Let's just go for that, divide by four and you get that result. And you can see again, just move it around, maybe position it like that. You'll notice there's also some parameters. Parameters are, you don't have to use the parameter. You could just use it as RX, RY and the four, perfectly reasonable, but you can introduce A in here, so, let's, or B or C, of course. There's only three, unfortunately, that's it. So, A, B, and C, and you can then vary the setting here, so you can just see as I change that, you get that result. Now, unfortunately, there's no preset feature for equations. I really wish they would add one, I do not know why they haven't, wasn't in version one, two, etc. nor is it in three. It just seems to be quite an oversight that there's no equations, especially there's no way to store the information, particularly if you've obviously created it, just put it in a notebook. If you get a really great equation, put it there. One option probably you could use macros, just store it away in a macro so you can save that and then just apply it. But it's just a fiddly way. Would be nicer if there was a preset option. But still, as I mentioned, you can change this. And again, you can put times four or whatever. So again, you can see that change, squeeze that like that. So it's a great way of transforming or distorting your image with this. I'm not going to go with B and C. I just 
I wanted to show you, you can use these parameters. Okay, next one, polar. Now polar, you've got R and T. You haven't got R and X, RX, etc., RY. You've just got R and T. You can only use those. You can use some mathematical things like sine. So you can put sine, you can do that also with Cartesian as well. So you can put sine, bracket, and R. Like that. Now the result might not be very good. You might put, say, times 100. Uh, maybe divided by 100. Let's just use divide by 100. And you can see sometimes you get different, actually get some, that looks like it really zooms in. You can see some sort of pattern there, which you may find very useful just to create some very, very sort of zoomed images like that. But you've got sine. You don't have to use sine. You don't have to use cosine. I think that's about it. Compared with procedural texture, the amount of options are very, very limited. I think there might be OSC option, maybe, RY. Yeah, you can use that. Find out more about that in the Affinity Help of all the various things. But it doesn't give much detail, I must admit. However, let's just go with R divided by 2. And then maybe go down here and you've got T. And what you can do, you can times 10 and you get this sort of effect. And you can see you can create a very nice, sort of very distorted starburst image. And of course, you've got 10 there, but you could always go with 4. And again, you can use the A, A in that equation. You can see that result. And again, you can then vary the setting here. So you can see. Now, unfortunately, you get this, but you can move this. So you can reposition it. Of course, if you go that way, you're still going to get the line. But you can drag it down, drag it up like that to create some very interesting sort of twirl effects, designs like that, something like that. Right. What you can also do is let's just go divided by 10. Get something like that. Or maybe T minus R divided by 10 to get something like that. There's a whole range of different options here. And again, you can change this, maybe four times R, get something like that. It gives you a sort of swirl effect there. I think that's a, so 10 times R and so on. You could also put, of course, 10 times T here. You don't need to keep the R equals R in the equation. You can always bring in these other ones, put the T in the R field. And again, you might have to instead, if you want, T divided by 10. And then the result is actually, again, one of those sort of zoom effects you can see. Now, you can also use square roots in some of these. So square root times R. Sorry, bracket R. Whoops, don't want those. That's not going to be used. You can't use those emojis in the thing. You can see there you've got square root. So you can see this can be used with that and put T there and you get half effect. And again, you can drag this up to create a nice record or disc effect like that. And of course, you can still continue to modify these. And let's just go for three times T, get something like that. And again, you can see then you get some very extreme zoom effects there. Now, I'm just going to click apply because the next thing you can do is you can apply it again. Now, the result of this may be a really ex extreme zoom. So let's just quickly go. You can always go to pixel filters, and then you've got here fade equations. So you've got the equation, you've applied, you've obviously got the original image already, so fade equations, and then you can see now, actually what it does create, sort of like light streaks on top of your image, if you use obviously normal here. So here I've got normal, and you can see I can change this, I can just put very subtle sort of lines going there. Now I can't modify the actual effect, it's, that's stuck there now, unless you undo of course. But you can then go through here, blend modes, and you can see then you can get some very abstract designs, maybe go with lighten to create some interesting streaks like that across the image. And of course, the previous result, you can vary in thousands of different ways depending on the R and the T, RX and RY. Obviously the results, how the fade will work, will be subtly different. So you can obviously go with something like that, maybe something like that, or maybe that, average, etc. But also what you can do is you can apply it again. So here, pixel, filters, and then repeat equations. I've got a shortcut for there, I've set up, but you can go repeat equations. And of course, in this case, it's just ultimately a very intense zoom effect. Let's just go back, pixel, 
filters, and again, distort and equations. But as mentioned, you can also use it on layers. So let's just go and use it on a layer. So let's just create a layer. Now, I'm not going to create a new image. I'm just going to use this as this, and I'm just going to hold down the Ultra Option key and just duplicate this design. So let's just create something like that. So exactly the same as before. I can go to Pixel, Filters, and I'm going to Distort, and just go down here again to Equations. And in Equations, I can do exactly the same thing. So again, divided by 2, and you can see that's gone off there. So let's put 2 times X. And because I've got zero there, like, okay, let's go with wrap. And then you can see it <laughs> does help. You have to remember when you're using layers or anything is that this is quite key. So wrap, go with that and Y times two. Now you get this. Now you can't move it around. So what you can do, of course, exactly the same as before, you can always put RX there and RY. Oh, I've got it the wrong way around. It doesn't matter. And you can see then you can reposition it, move it around. And of course, you can use other effects as well. So you don't have to go with that one. You can go polar and minus T divided by 10. And then T divided by or minus R di times 10, whatever. And you can see, oh, get a very weird sort of noise effect using that one. That's very strange. You can see you can create quite a lot of different designs and sometimes the result of an equation may be a pleasant surprise or not. And you might then, of course, just change it very quickly as well. And again, this one looks like it does create quite an intense design with this. You can see you've got these lovely lines, which you could use, of course, maybe put it over, say, that sunflower there and click apply. Now, what you can also do, of course, with this thing, you can use selections as well. You can always just undo that. I'm just going to put it back to that. And let's go to the pixel and make certain I can select this, the rectangular marquee tool. And you can see then I can use that, just create that selection. And again, pixel filters, and again, distort and equations. And again, just go for, I'm going to go with X, X times two. And you can see Y times two. And again, go with wrap. And you can create a design like that, very quick design using a selection. Doesn't have to be applied to the entire image. You can also use this with channels as well. So you've got the channels panel. You can find that in the, let's just quickly cancel that. Go to pixel and, oh, channels panel, window, general, and oh, it's not there. Ha, there's always a way. Quite often find that I'm going into these things and suddenly I can't find them myself. Pixel, there you are. It's gonna be in somewhere, isn't it? Channels. Of course, with version three, they changed all the structure and I still go to the wrong one to look for it. However, channels, there you've got the panel and you can then manipulate with that. There it is. You can also use the filter to create designs like this. Just R times 10 and then T minus 1000 divided by R. And you of course can change that 1000, make it 2000 or 3000, etc. Well, also what you can do, you can always, of course, put A times that and then simply move this parameter to do that. However, the result, of course, can be modified even further. You can apply it again, but also, of course, simply go to filters and distort and maybe use it with some of the other ones like glitch, etc. Also makes great for displacements, distortions as well. If you've got any questions or thoughts about this, please let me know in the comments below. Bye.